Devlog number 32. So I've once again had a very productive few weeks since the last one of these. Last several devlogs have been me just trying and trying to get the scenario editor done so that I can move on, and uh, I was doing all the work to get each one of these buttons and lists and things to where it needed to be. Um, and it was a big thing every time, but I did kind of a... Uh, I changed my working methodology a little bit, and whereas before, like, each devlog I was getting maybe, like, two of these uh, categories of things done, um, if I was lucky, I found a way to go faster and now they're all done. <laughs> so, um, battles, fully editable, encounters, fully editable, campaigns, fully editable. Let's actually look at each of these. So battles are about as they are. I did improve um, the UI like I said I would, so I can I can point at these now and it just makes the, the reject sound if I try to do something that's not legal. Uh, but yeah, they don't don't interrupt uh, cursor or focus stuff anymore like they did before. Uh, let me put that, that back to how it was. Uh, anyway, right, so yeah, battles are done, uh, encounters are done. We looked at this before. It's a little better. Oh, these have slightly different icons now. So if it's an encounter with one battle, it has one X on it. If I add another battle, uh, it has two X's. If I add another battle, it has two X's. <laughs> So basically, this is encounter, this is gauntlet, this is puzzle. Uh, that's if it has a puzzle inventory. And then... Just whatever, I don't even know what I'm adding here, just whatever. And uh, this is puzzle gauntlet. So, anyway. Um, what did I even have last time? I had a partial encounter editor where... Had I done the inventory thing? I don't think this was all working. This was not all working. Yeah, so anyway, um, puzzle inventory. I can edit this now. So for this puzzle, you get two mages. Uh, and it shows me two there. And it's smart enough to know that it's it's two mages. Or like if I had a warrior, then it's three champions total. So two mages, one warrior. Or if you want four warriors. Won't be able to place them on the battlefield probably, but you know what? If you want four warriors, there they are. Uh... So yeah, you can just add whatever. So this gives the full list of equipment that exists in the scenario minus what's already added. So as I add, fewer things are available there, and then it gets to be no equipment. Uh, oh right, and I changed a thing where the move up and move down items are just always visible. They just enable and disable as needed. Uh, and that matches sort of what I did with the battle. So yeah, fewer things moving around in the UI. Uh, even if, you know, you can point at something that clicking it doesn't do anything. I think it's better this way. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's all fully editable there. Um, <laughs> why would I put lore in an inventory for a puzzle? I don't know, it might make sense. You can go to a puzzle and read a thing that's unique to that puzzle, maybe. Um, anyway, yeah, so, uh, encounter editor's done, I can edit rewards. Um, rewards for a puzzle are a little weird, but they could make sense. You know, you could have an optional puzzle somewhere where if you do it, you get a campaign reward that you can use for other stuff. That's fine. Uh, and rewards can be campaign specific. I think that's a new thing. I've done so much, I am having trouble remembering what's new and what's not. I went, you gone and you gone. In fact, check it out, there's a better way to do this. Yes. Uh... Right, so I was here in Encounters. Um, so like Encounter 1 normally rewards a Mage Champion and a Fire Spell. So let's say that if you're in the... Yeah, okay, so by default it's all campaigns. Um, only on the main campaign do you get the Fire Spell. Oh, there's a problem here isn't there. No, there's not, because this list is non-unique. Right. So I can have two different fire spells. It's not the clearest thing for looking at here. Hmm. Okay, so I have some UI polish to do, but... Okay, yeah, so this is what it would look like if I wanted on the main campaign and the early giant campaign to be awarded the fire spell, but not in the time mage campaign. So when you solve it in those, you get mage for all three, fire for just the two. I'm not immediately sure what to do about that, because it's weird to just see two fire items on this list. My instincts say I should put something over here to indicate what campaigns they apply to. I guess, yeah, I could put this little flag icon here to say it's specific to a campaign. 
Yeah, just some some kind of little marker icon saying like, hey, there's more you might want to look at deeper in here. Uh, but this one wouldn't have the marker, so it'd just be made for everybody all the time. Uh, something like that, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'll think about it. Anyway, yeah, so uh, encounter editor's done. Map editor, let's take a look at this. So, <laughs> well, I can create map zones. Sure, here's a new map zone. Uh, map zones don't really have any information associated with them other than a name. Uh, this untitled zone is now called name. Um, those will have more later when they're actually implemented. I have map color groups. Uh, sure, untitled color group. Your color is going to be some kind of like cyan -y kind of color. Sure, why not? Uh, all right. Um, so then if I go to map zone name defined but not used, you know what? Map zones are not actually implemented, so let me just get rid of this. Uh, color group, untitled color group, defined but not used. Let's assign puzzle to map appearance. Here we go. That goes to untitled color group. Oh, right, and I can change the map label here. Uh, let's lowercase the P just so we can see, like, a visible change here. Zone is base. That's the only zone I have because I deleted the other one. And check this out. So I can change the map position, and this is what it looks like. And this gives a little preview of what it's going to look like on the uh, on the map. And you can't put two things overlapping. All right, so that's over there now. Position 8.5, and if I go back... Oh, also, it uh, got rid of the warning because I used the map color group. So yeah, over here, it looks like that now. That color kind of blends into the sky. Didn't think that far ahead, but... You can see the changes. So with that, uh, map editing's done. That's all it technically needs. Um, once map zones are in, things will change. Uh, the reason map zones exist is because uh, this is a very finite amount of space. If you want more than, what is this, 7 by... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 by 7. 15 times 7 is a lot of encounters. But it's conceivable you might want to make a scenario with more than that and not have to place them all in this map. You know, maybe have them spaced out a little bit. Some spatial layout here. So an ex another map zone is just like another page of this. So a different uh, different page of place to, to put stuff. But there's more design stuff I need to think about with that. Um, but like... You can edit the scenario data. <laughs> when map zones are there, the things you set up now will be uh, will be ready to go. Campaign editor. Uh, identify our name just like anything else. Starting map zone, right, yeah. And maybe some campaigns start in different map zones. I don't know. I feel like I should assign that. And yeah, so main campaign starts with a, a warrior, a sword, and a potion. And test lore one, no spells. Uh, by comparison, the time mage campaign starts with a mage instead of a warrior, sword, wizard, hat, and mage robe, so lots of stuff to start with, gradual potion, which you can only get in that campaign in this test scenario, haste and slow spells, which you can only get there and in puzzles in this test scenario. So yeah, just those are the different starting conditions for that. Uh, campaigns can also have prerequisites, like to do early giant, I have to have a campaign victory on, yes, the main campaign. Or I could say you have to have a campaign victory on Time Mage. No, say main campaign. Um, that should just work, right? I'm running this with a debugger attached right now. Yeah, early giant locked. Win campaign, main campaign. Uh, ooh. Ha! <laughs> okay. So the UI doesn't know how to close this and point me at main campaign to say that you have to win this. If I were to... Let's see, I'm pretty sure I can do this. Ooh, this would be weird. So this wouldn't make any sense. Campaign victory. Let's say time mage here. Locking an encounter in one campaign behind... Winning another campaign. There's no reason you couldn't do this, but it'd be weird. Yeah, see, from here it knows how to pop this up and uh, show that. All right, it's a minor UI bug, easy to fix. Uh, anyway, yeah, so prerequisites, editable, um, starting conditions, and that's really all that a campaign is. 
Yep. All right. Champions. We've already seen this. Uh, equipment already seen. Items, spells, abilities. Those three are basically the same thing. It's just that they have very slightly different information attached. Like, spells have required stats and resource costs. Items only have required stats. Abilities only have resource costs. Because an ability is innate to a champion. Uh, so a required stat makes no sense. Um... And items consume themselves, so costing resources makes no sense for them. Uh, this icon's bothering me. It's, it kind of goes weirdly flat on the left. I should change that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so like fire spell, uh, identifier name, icon, this is all familiar stuff. Sound, we've seen this before. Visual effect, so that has shine star. That's the effect when the spell is invoked. So that's the star sliding across the champion uh, view at the top. Then the actual effect of the fire particles is inside the effect here. So visual effect is fire. Particles icon uh, with this color. Fire is the name of the visual effect. We'll get to visual effects. Uh, it affects health. Yeah, it, it's of type change resource. The resource that changes is health. The element that it, that's used is fire. I can choose none if I want. Uh, there are no elemental affinities currently in test scenarios, so this makes no difference. But I can make my fire non-elemental. Let's make it cold fire. I don't have an, an ice element. All right, let's make it wet fire. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, this is just a formula editor. So, yep, fully editable. Uh, range is 9. Because, yeah, so range, rows, number of rows away it can be. Because the battlefield, the player side of the battlefield is 5x5 five five max. The enemy side of the fi battlefield is 5x5 five five max. So if I'm standing in, uh, let's say... Man, it's great to be able to just, like, go somewhere and have a perfect visual aid for showing this off. So let's say I'm, uh, uh I can press the alternate button to reposition. Let's say I'm this imp, and I want to cast a fire spell on a player that's standing all the way over there. I need a range of at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine lets you reach all the way from the very back of one battlefield to all the way in the very back of the other one. Uh... Therefore, 9 is the maximum range, and 0 is the minimum. So 0 would mean it can only be in your own row, 9 is the entire battlefield. Valid targets. A lot of these editor views aren't really prettied up, but they, they have the, the information and capabilities that they need. Uh, this is sort of rough first draft. And yeah, that's uh, Spell Editor. Item Editor looks the same, just doesn't have uh, resource costs. Uh, right, but it does have required stats. So in order to use a potion, you need to have at least one health max. I mean, you'll need that just to be alive. Also, I think this feature is unimplemented. I don't think I ever actually check... Whoa. What did I do? I must have just not pressed OK. I pressed cancel or something. Let's let's change this. Let me make this strength and give it an impossibly high value. So you have to have strength 12 to use a potion. Let me see if I have implemented this. I'm pretty sure I haven't. So I'm going to go here. OK, see, this is why I attached a debugger. Uh, oh, this is a crash I was trying to track down. I saw this once and I didn't know what it was about. Um, why can't I scroll? Oh jeez. Oh boy, since I was in full screen mode this is gonna be weird now, isn't it? Like it just doesn't respond to my scroll wheel here, but I can I can drag. Alright, scenario data. Get champion. Identifier equals imp. Out index is null. Sure, why not? Get into implementation. Scenario seg fault. All right, so this is scenario data.c, 5840. That file has a lot of lines in it. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk about the source code here. Let me debug this uh, first and then we can... Oh boy, I might have to talk about it now. <laughs> so the working methodology change that I applied was to fully embrace macros. 
because there's a whole lot of duplicate code in uh, putting together like all those editor buttons and stuff. So let's say, okay, so items button action. So items button action calls top level button action implementation. So then this is a macro that does the like six lines of code for each one of those buttons that's mostly duplicated across them. And the parameters are all the unique stuff that happens in it. Um, yeah, okay. So anyway, it's complicated, but basically like instead of having instead of typing out this code and copying it for each one of those buttons uh, and changing just the the little bits that are different. I just parameterize them instead in a macro. It does make this harder to debug though. Like the, the benefit of macroing all these things is like I reduce line duplication. I increase consistency by making my all the code that invokes very similar things exactly the same with just like a couple of things substituted in. Um, but then if I want to debug it, like this is pointing me at a macro line here, 5840. So scenario data, get entry implementation, champions, champion count. So first of all, is my scenario valid? Looks like it. Uh, what's the identifier? It's imp. Imp looks valid to me. All right. Um, out index is null. It won't be trying to write to it if it's null. Uh, I, I have that right. Okay, so let's look at the definition for this macro. All right, so it iterates through scenarios uh, champions list, which is what I parameterized this to. Uh, and when it finds an entry in the list with a matching identifier, if out index is not null, it returns that in there, and then it returns this. Okay. So something's seg faulting. Do I have an entry index right now? Yes, I do. So I'm, I'm within the scope of this macro here. Yeah, so the, the debugger just shows me the macro line. Uh, it doesn't have line information for each individual line in this macro, because this is all one line, because I'm using backslash to get rid of the, the different lines. So yeah, this, this makes it harder to debug, but easier to write. And it let me basically finish the editor in three weeks, which was great. Anyway, so what's wrong with scenarios champions list? Fifi, what's that? That's like some kind of placeholder uh, pointer value to say like, this has been freed and scribbled over or something. So my champions array is some weird invalid value. Why? Oh, that entire scenario is invalid. This is a lot of fifi. So my scenario point is wrong. Okay, fair enough. Um, why? So this was called from champion state model scenario. 9B, 3B, 290. So yeah, that's an invalid scenario pointer. Why is that? Okay, so champion state model. Champion state model. Really? Hold on, let me look at my stack trace again. Champion state model init, sure. 9B, 3B, 290. That's the same scenario. Uh, self doesn't have a game session. Okay, so if I go up, let's try now. Nope. Up. Let me go to somebody with a game session. Game session is sort of my object that holds all the semi-global state uh, during an execution of the application. Uh, encounter setup screen here. I know you have one. 9AC1FF8. That's a different scenario. And that looks like a completely valid scenario. Test scenario copy, no Fifi pointers in here. <laughs> uh, so wait, down. Oh. 
battle state model create battle inventory state I have a hunch no this doesn't have a scenario pointer in it hold on so battle state model create somebody has a stale scenario pointer it's you it's the inventory Okay, so I think what's happening here is at some point I must initialize the... Hold on, but what's inventory state? Ah, uh, I kind of know what's going on here. Okay, so... I, uh... Oh boy, where am I? What's going on? Um, I have a bunch of things open I don't usually want to have open when I'm recording this, but just ignore them. <laughs> Uh, so I have this thing where when I go to the editor, I'm operating on the scenario data struct. So this guy, the, uh, the basis for all scenario data lists, basically just a bunch of lists of stuff, uh, with a couple of extra things attached. Separately, okay, yeah, so game session has a whole list of those. Uh, yes, that. And also a, a pointer to the current one. So this gets accessed all over the place when I want to, like, look in the current scenario that's running to say, hey, I want to look up the champion named Imp, which is what's being attempted to do here. So it reaches into the game session and uses this scenario. This pointer is kept up to date. That's what the editor screen modifies when it's making modifications. But additionally, there's this scenario state model thing. This, let's look at the header file. So scenario state model, ooh, old, uh, old file. This one's been around for a while. Uh, scenario state model is what keeps things like um, the state of encounter clears. So this knows that I have cleared encounters one and two, but not three and four uh, in my current uh, player profile, if you want to think of it that way. It has its own player inventory and it has its own scenario pointer. Why? I should just get rid of this and anywhere I reference this, go to the game session scenario because this pointer right here is getting stale. I did something on the editor screen which changed the pointer that's used by game session and probably freed this one, making it no longer valid. But then because I had initialized like the encounter setup screen at startup. Okay, I'm just gonna quit this uh, debugging session. Um, why are you here? Okay, so I think it's non-trivial to go and fix that right now. I'm just going to say that I know what's going on. My process for fixing this would be delete this line, recompile, see what uh, complains, see if everywhere that I access that pointer, which doesn't need to be there, it's duplicate information, everywhere that accesses that pointer should go for game sessions scenario instead. So this is the one authoritative pointer to the scenario data. Scenario state model doesn't need its own and it needs to not have its own because it's causing me problems right now. Um, but there are probably some places where I'm not specifically passing a game session when I have a scenario state model. Yeah, like when I initialize the battle state there. Well, then I just pass the scenario to it. Because, yeah, here in, um, where was that that I saw that? Recalculate champion states. Encounter setup screen.c, 912. Yeah, like I'd happily fix this during the video. It's just that it's going to be longer and fiddlier than I'd like it to be. I could pause and do it. Okay. Let's do some editing. Imagine that. Whoops, I just closed a file. It's fine. I didn't need that file. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Delete this line. Recompile. Uh, where am I? Here I am. See what complains. Fix all those complaints. So anybody who wants the scenario pointer in scenario state model is now going to have to dig it out of game session instead. Which means that in some places like encounter setup screen, what line was that? Oh yeah, make takes forever on this platform, that's right. 
Uh, it was recalculate champion states. So in here, you create a battle state model, passing it only a battle configuration and a player inventory state model, which itself has a scenario? Because somewhere in there, you were accessing the scenario pointer. Tell me about player inventory state model. How has make not done anything yet? I mean, it's doing stuff. It's just really, really slow about it. It's so weird. Yeah, this has a scenario pointer too. What? You also go away. <laughs> Neither of you should have that. All right, well, I'm going to delete those two struct fields. Wait for make to uh, wake up. There, finally it went. <laughs> yeah, okay, scenario state model has no member named scenario. Oh, that's a lot of complaints. Well, they're all in scenario state model. This is way too many lines to do right now. I'm doing this later. <laughs> okay, that's decided it for me. <laughs> All right, well, let's just not recompile this right now. Okay, so anyway, that was extremely useful for me. I tracked down a bug that had been, that I didn't know where to get at. So like right now, the pointers will be in sync because I just started the application. Uh, anyway, yeah, so, so I can do stuff, but don't worry about it. All right, so that was super helpful for me. Sorry you don't get the satisfaction, but like that was, you saw how many lines that was. I'm not going to change that right now. <laughs> uh, I'll do that later. So where was I? Um, that's right, I was checking if required stats are implemented. Guess I can't do that right now. I'm pretty sure they're not. So that field is just ignored. Yeah, so there are a few unimplemented features in here. Required stats are one of them. Map zones are another. Uh, status effects, sure. So the haste status effect is applied by the haste spell. So this effect is of type apply status. Ooh, I don't focus, so when I open this, that cursor needs to go here to apply status. It's just like a two line change to make that happen, but I do need to make it happen, okay? Uh, plays this sound. Not one of my better sounds, but it's okay. I feel like it's it's a fine sound, it just doesn't fit the situation. Uh, has no visual effect assigned. Hey, check it out. Haste spell spell effect has no visual effect assigned. I can fix that now. Uh, Right, it doesn't take me all the way down into the multiple layers of this. Let's just make it sparkle yellow for now. There, sparkle yellow is your visual effect. And now that warning goes away. How nice. Uh, oops, right, gotta get out of this. Oh, did I see? No, no, that makes sense. Nope, nope, I didn't see anything wrong. It's fine. Uh, right, so yeah, anyway, haste, spell effect, uh, has that visual effect? Um, it is of type apply status. The status effect that it applies is haste. Uh, expires by turn count. Oh yeah, this has that same problem. It didn't go to turn count, it went to never. Okay, I understand why. Uh, can apply up to two of those, has that power formula, that duration formula, etc. We've seen this all in JSON form, but now it's in the game itself. Uh, but anyway, the haste status effect has that icon, does not tick, so has no sound. Ooh, I should hide these when there's no tick. Because you would need to be of type, oh, and type should go above the, the sounds if they're gonna be specific to that. Do I complain about expiration visual effect or sound? I don't. I just make consider that optional in this list, so it doesn't give you a to-do item to assign a, a thing. I don't. Does anything have an expiration effect? I don't think it does. I wonder if that's implemented. I would check, but I have this uh, scenario state model player inventory stale pointer bug, so I don't think I can do that right now. All right, I'll, I'll do that later. Anyway, yeah, so this is of type stat change. Oh, yep, same problem there. Gotta put the pointer. These are all the same, uh, same class of pop-up. It's just, this is a static text list view, static text list pop-up view, something like that. Uh, and I'm not calling the function that focuses the uh, the row of the thing that's already selected that invokes it. So I will need to do that, but it's an easy fix. Uh, right, yeah, so while this status effect is active, it ch makes a change in the stat of speed uh, in the amount based on this. So the base is three and then power is also added to that. 
it's not entirely obvious. I'm going to need some documentation or different UI on this or something, but like power is essentially a function parameter to this uh, formula, which is passed in from the way the spell is invoked. The power formula here is based on the actor's focus stat. So basically like if a more powerful mage casts the haste spell, then the haste status effect that's applied uh, makes you faster. Can I make it last longer? Yes, but the expiration is a property of the... Um, the spell, not the status effect. So I could make this also based on focus if I wanted. Right, but yeah, power actually has to pass to the status effect here. That seems weird, but I think it makes sense. Anyway, yeah, so status effect editor is there. Uh, that was already there, that was already there, that was already there, that was already there. This is new. So there is one whole new widget here. So yeah, lore is just a thing that goes in your inventory that you can read about. It can be a prerequisite for unlocking stuff, but other than that, it doesn't doesn't technically have any bearing on the game. Uh, yeah, this looks great, doesn't it? <laughs> so another bit of a rough edge in the UI. Let's just pretend, let's just say this isn't that many lines. <laughs> here we go, so multi-line text editing. Multi-line text editing. Yeah, and this will do word wrapping and everything. You know, mash the keyboard and that happens. I can put in hard line breaks if I want. So yeah, that's my lore description now. Uh, so if I could go back to the scenario and look at that, then it would say multi-line text editing with all this gibberish in it. Uh, that's fine though. Yeah, so I gotta do something with like scrolling there or whatever. Tiles, I can edit these. Right, so let's make dirt look like sand. Sure, why not? Uh, has that icon, name is dirt. Doesn't grant any properties. Sure, dirt makes you wet now. <laughs> dirt is now sand that makes you wet. Yep. Uh, element types, yep, okay, so these are just a name, an icon, and a formula. Sure, we've been over this. This is a formula editor. Looks like any anything else. Why do I have this forcing being on the left? So, oh, because there's no room on either side. This is too wide to fit here or here. So no, I'm not forcing. That's just left side was where there was more room. There wasn't enough, but it's closer on the left. That's fine. Visual effects. This one's fun. Let's look at that last. So mechanics is just speed formula and move formula. Um, scenario info, identifier name, author... Those don't work yet, so yeah, unimplemented things. Um, they will need to be there though. So yeah, this was all done today. This was the last one. So visual effects are a very different sort of thing from like everything else that's in here. I wasn't sure how it was gonna work to do an editor for them, but I worked it out. So the slash visual effect is used by what? I believe the attack ability? Shine. Yes, okay, so first it shines, that's the white line moving across the champion view at the top. Then the effect has a slash, so that's what takes place in the target and does that little do thing diagonally across. So, shine is of type shine. Uh, oh, this, this has the same problem, it went to particles, needs to go to shine instead. So it's of type shine. There are three different categories of visual effects. So it's either a shine, which is something that moves across the champion view, or a swish, which is like, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but like a, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but it's that's that diagonal slash or the, the swirly thing for using an item. That's what this icon represents, anyway. That's, that's what a swish is. Or it's particles, which is obvious enough, like those little green thingies coming out uh, when you drink a potion. Uh, for this, it uses, right, yeah, so that's the actual graphic that gets scrolled across. Or I could make it the star. And yeah, a lot of technical stuff here. Anyway, so yeah, sure, let's change the color of it if you want. Uh, it stretches vertically. So, you know, I have this graphic here which stretches itself like this goes up here, this goes down here so that it fills the entire space. But I want the star to stay, to keep its aspect ratio so it stays stays as it is. Uh, 
Eh, complicated stuff isn't really implemented. Don't worry about it. Anyway, yeah, so a swish gets diagonal motion or horizontal motion or spiral motion. Those are the three that I have. So yeah, a lot of hard-coded stuff. Just like, these are the things that I implemented for, um, for how these visual effects work. Sparkle green has outward particle motion, uh, has a color. And yeah, so this is what I was doing today. Particles are a little more complicated because they actually play a little animation. So if we were to look at, let's see, if I were, I'll bet I can work around this problem that I have by pressing this button. So that'll have refreshed all of my scenario pointers so I can go here without crashing, right? Yeah. So anyway, add you, give you a potion and have you use it right away. Whoa, whoa, that's abilities, actions, potion, self. I just want to look at the particle effect. So here's a swish. Ooh, I still have a visual glitch on that. I saw a pixel show up there that shouldn't have. I thought I fixed that long ago, but it keeps coming back. Anyway, yeah, so that's the particle effect. So those green sparkly things. Uh, so those are a series of uh, graphics that get animated. Um, where can I look at this most easily? I guess in here. Anyway, so I had a whole thing like, this was actually all the ba way back in devlog number 13 when I showed first how uh, visual effects worked in general. There are a lot more icons here now. I've been drawing a whole bunch of them. Uh, yeah, okay, so here are the animation frames for those. So it goes from this to this to this and then half of them instead go from this to this to this. Uh, it's not quite that simple, but anyway, that's sort of how it works. So anyway, I have like actual picture swapping animations that are playing there while that visual effect comes up. Um, those used to be completely hard coded. You could just, you could have that sparkle effect, you could have a bubbly effect, and that was all you would get. But now all of those animation frames are specified in the scenario itself. And if I go to this, this shows me the preview of uh, what that looks like. So um, this is a little weird, but yeah, I have the, the sparkle animation, the fire animation, which needs some work, but it's okay. Bubble animation. And these are non-animations. Uh, this this is used for like the stars um, absorbing inward for casting a spell. This one is the same thing for casting a spell that costs health. Uh, you don't actually see this in test scenario, but it's it's there. So yeah, got an animation selector here, and an animation selector is not enough. I need an animation editor. Got one of those too. So if I want to edit sparkle, this is super jank by the way. So be ready for some jank. Uh, this has eleven frames in it. This just stretches to fit the icon space. This is not designed to look like this. It's it's real bad, but this is how it is. This doesn't fit on screen. This is showing me everything in my texture atlas. Uh, so anyway, technically this all works. It's not usable, but technically it does all work. All right, let's make this look totally messy. I'm gonna stick that in there and like put an ooze in there and like uh, one of these, I don't know. Um, and let's do the same thing for the other frame set. So there are two sets of frames for this animation. And when the particles are spawned during the effect, even ones get the first frame set, odd ones get the second frame set. Um, or just basically like each one goes down the frame set in turn. And uh, here, frame set three, let's add add some more more messy stuff. This one looked like a padlock. Why is this different? Ah, because I'm seeing the lower right of it instead of the... Well, but no, there's the giant face. Why is... Why did this make a different decision about... What to show me? Now I'm here. Oh, I know why that is. It's complicated. Let's put it that way. All right, this is not going to look like much of anything, but you'll at least be able to tell that something is happening. So yeah, I need scrolling there and I need just a completely different UI, kinda. But anyway, 
I changed the sparkle animation, so now it's gonna look super weird. But just to show that that is indeed editable. Yeah, okay, well, it's, it's something. It was hard to tell what, but it was something. I mean, you see those weird shapes popping up. It's very fast, kind of too fast to tell at all what's going on. But yeah, I saw those padlocks, oops. Yeah, like there's a, there's a padlock in there. It's all green. Um, I could change that if I wanted. I also just have this animations editor just kind of tucked in here at the bottom of the visual effects list. It kind of makes sense because it only has to do with visual effects and only some of them. But this, this could also be its own button out here. I don't know what I'm doing with that. Anyway, yeah, so last minute, super janky stuff, but it all works. <laughs> I can change all this stuff. The one major thing that's missing here is the ability to actually import different images here. Uh, so that I could, oh yeah, okay, so here we go. This is uh, a different way to preview this. Yeah, looks weird. <laughs> That's how it is. <laughs> Just kind of flashing random images up there. Uh, yeah, so anyway, um, it works. It's cool. Uh, so yeah, asset management is a big thing that the editor still needs. Um, and a lot of rough edges to file off. But uh, as soon as I have basically just be able to import an image, my plan is for next time to rebuild the scenario showcase, the showcase scenario. That's the order those words go in. Uh, this uses title case. The rest of these use sentence case. By the way, I changed all of my button titles and uh, menu item titles to be sentence case because I decided I liked it better. As soon as I made that change, I was a lot happier with how this looks. So yeah, I want sentence case everywhere. Uh, so check it out. I can't fix this one because this is a built-in scenario, but let's pretend we're doing this work now. I can fix that right here, right now. Check it out. This is showcase scenario with a lowercase s. There we go. Much better. And I, right, I did update that correctly. Good. Okay. Sentence case achieved. <laughs> yeah. So what I want to do, I think it'd be a super interesting exercise, um, is I want to just create a new scenario here. And with just the tools in the scenario editor, see what it's like to actually populate it from complete scratch using only this editor and get it to something as functional as the showcase scenario. So that's going to hopefully be the activity next time because like I'm actually there with, uh, with this except for importing images because I do need actual icons and graphics and animations and things. Um, that's the only thing that's missing. It's technically a little bit complicated, but like the UI for it shouldn't be too bad. Um, it's extremely realistic that I'll have that done next time, plus probably a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, that's what we can actually finally do next time. So yeah, I'm over the editor hump. Macros saved me and uh, got me where I needed to be with that. And it's great. So yeah, a little bit more editor polish, then we're going to start actually using it next time, and then we can move on to the rest of the game at last. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> I'm real happy with this. All right, I'll see you next time with that.